Well, I think for, for acid grasslands, uh, one of the things is it's sort of, you know, determined by the underlying geology. And if you're not familiar with the local geology, uh, in this situation, very often, we, you know, we've got some large plants in the wider landscape that can give you a good clue that you're sort of, you know, you've got locally got acidic conditions. And uh, bracken is, is an obvious one, which we've, we've got plenty of that in the local landscape. And uh, gorse, uh, very often you can pick that out from quite some distance. And uh, obviously heathers as well. I think the first thing to say, unlike uh, sort of our neutral grasslands and our calcareous grasslands, where we you know we're very much drawn to the colourful array of wild flowers that we'll find in them, um, these sort of uh, dry acid grasslands are, are species poor. They're not very colourful, and very often they tend to be a little bit sort of you know shorter in the sward as well. So they have a short appearance to them, and uh, it's the grasses that are the main thing that sort of you know define them and uh, there are several sort of key grass species and uh, the, the first one I should mention I'm sitting here amongst what I think is one of our prettiest grasses which is wavy hair grass and uh, this is the dominant grass species in this particular um, you know, grassland that we're actually sitting in today but uh, other key species and that, uh, that's here present in this one as well there's uh, sheep's fescue and uh, also sort of uh, smaller grasses like early hair grass which won't form you know won't be in abundance but will be present and will give you an indication that you've got acidic condi con conditions uh, other examples would be uh, heath grass and we've got some of that here locally as well and uh, mat grass as well in terms of the the actual sort of herbs the it's not species rich, but there are a couple of you know really sort of important strong indicators. Uh, sheep sorrel, very often that will be you know a key component, and uh, in this sort of situation as well, um, heath bed straw. And uh, though it's a very small flower when it's growing on mass, you can actually you know it'll actually be quite quite visible. <laughs> Some other types of uh, sort of acidic grass, some dry acidic grassland, um, there might be a little bit more colour. There, there might be some mouse-eared hawkweed uh, with its yellow flowers, or we might have the blue flowers of uh, harebell. Uh, but uh, and also sometimes, you know, there might be a little bit of uh, a common bird's foot trefoil. Uh, but generally speaking, they're going to be drab, and uh, there's not going to be much colour in them at all. I mentioned about the sort of key grass species, and I should also mention that. Uh, uh, there are a couple of species which you might see in sort of neutral grasslands which can actually be important here in acidic grasslands as well so common bent and sweet vernal grass sometimes and uh, if there's been a little bit sort of you know of improvement uh, then you might start to see a few of the other sort of fescues in there as well <laughs> Yes, no, it's generally always going to be dry and uh, the only place where it will change is if you've actually, you know, you're, if you're in a site, which in fact where we are here today at Jenderson Colman, uh, you know, we see that, uh, you know, there are some wetter parts of the site, but it's grading into something else as well. So it's always tends to be very, very dry and uh, other species will sort of occur when you start to pick that up. So it starts to get sort of damper in acidic conditions. Uh, purple moor grass, you know, is something that you'll see and uh, heath rush and there's sort of you know a couple of examples of what's you know species that will be present where it starts to get a little bit damper <laughs> Occasionally you will, amongst the, the dryas grassland, you will get some subshrubs, some of the heathers. Uh, but there's sort of a golden figure that uh, as long as the subshrubs don't occupy more than 25% cover, uh, then you're in dry acid grassland. Uh, when they become more than 25%, uh, then you're actually in dry heathland. And that's a very, very important point because the dry acid grassland occurs as a mosaic with dry heathland uh, very, very frequently. 
and uh, we should we'll probably look at some of that later on today.